Ladies and gentlemen, you're here in the dungeon with the dungeon dweller himself. My name is Pete Wall. This is Pillar to Post, and tonight, tonight is your NXT report. And today is June 21st, 2017, and we got it all here, all the action tonight from NXT. What a great night we had. We had the return of Ember Moon, and in the main event... We had Aleister Black finally taken to the limit by one Cassius Ono. Stay tuned to find out the action that took place here tonight on NXT. But before we get into that, I want to discuss some, uh, some things here on Pillar to Post. One, the beanie sitting on top of my head. A new piece of merchandise for the Circle of Steel brand. If you don't know what the Circle of Steel brand is, it ties in with the novel I wrote. It's a fantasy fiction novel titled Dragon's Kin. I am the author, Pete Wall. But it also ties in with the channel itself. Pillar to Post and everyone that becomes a subscriber here on Pillar to Post or a follower on VidMe has joined the circle. That circle is like a, a steel ring. I'll watch your back, you watch mine. You want help with your channel, I'm there for you. Okay? I'm glad to do it for anybody. And I've done it for everybody since I started this 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 podcast. My co-host came up to me. He's the one that contacted me. He goes, dude, I just started doing what you're doing. Can you help me? You want to partner up, do a show together? No problem. Anyone that asks me to sub to their channel, I'm right there for them. Okay? You want to help my community grow, I'm willing to help your community grow as well. And that's what the Circle of Steel is all about. A community striving to make each other better. And that's what we've done here on Pillar to Post. And I am damn proud of that fact. We've got 139 subscribers now. Uh, 61 more to go. And we are going to do a merchandise giveaway draw. We reach 200 subs and we're going to do a merchandise draw and it's going to be either for a beanie, a t-shirt, either from Circle of Steel or the very first pillar to post beanie or t-shirt. Either one. It's going to be a big day. Help me get up there and we're going to kick that draw off and we're going to give a lucky subscriber and you must be a subscriber. We're going to give a lucky subscriber some free merchandise. So... That's taken care of. Very proud of my brands here on Pillar of Post and Circle of Steel. Very proud of it. Um, I want to give a shout out to my sponsors because without them, without their help, and without your help with the sponsors, the deals that they give you, this channel would be growing a lot slower than it has been. And believe me, I started off very rough. Everyone does. Everyone starts off very rough. And I am still in the basement. If you look at the totem pole of podcasters here on YouTube, I am still in the basement with y'all. Okay? I've got 139 subscribers. And you look at like guys like JD and Joe Cronin and, um, hell, Chris Danker. You know? I am a nobody. But I'm here to help you regardless. And my sponsors, my sponsors are willing to give you guys discounts, free stuff, in order for you to help this channel grow, as well as help get their name out there. So let's get this going and uh, give a shout out to my sponsors. But first, a shout out to my very first patron, Tyler Black. Thank you very much, man. $5 a month. I do thank you. It wasn't necessary, but I do appreciate it. I do appreciate the support you have for the for the channel. But today's podcast is brought to you by two sponsors. You've got Audible, and you get a free audio book download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com backslash pillar to post. Use that link for your chance to get a free download of over a hundred uh, two hundred thousand titles to choose from for your iPhone Android Kindle or mp3 player and you can enjoy that audiobook wherever you might want to go be it to the gym doing dishes laundry housework 
camping, fishing, you name it, you got that choice to have that book with you at all times. Now, you get a free 30-day a free 30-day for, uh, membership that goes along with this. If you decide you don't want to stick out the 30-day free membership, you can cancel the same day or a week later or a couple of weeks later and you will keep that free audiobook that you receive from them. Okay? So take advantage of this link because not only do you get a free uh, piece of uh, of their product, but you help the channel out and you help Audible out at the same time because you're getting word out for them and you're getting word out for me. Okay? Second sponsor that is sponsoring this podcast now is Grapple Merch. Visit grapple.bigcartel.com and when using this code PILLAR to post 77, you receive a discount courtesy of Pillar to Post and Grapple Merch. Now for wrestling memorabilia such as t-shirts, autograph, photos, WWE Elite wrestling figures in your very own Grapple Box. Now Grapple Box is very similar to uh, Wrestle Crate and uh, Loot Crate and all those things. And once their uh, next Grapple Box is ready, Grapple Box for Elite. I will be making sure I make my first purchase from Grapple Merch. Now, you get a discount of $2.50 out of your purchase using my link, or my code I should say, and that code gets used when you're ready to check out. So make sure you take advantage of that deal. You not only help the channel out by supporting the channel through using the link, but you're getting a discount and you're getting the name Grapple Merch out there. And we want to get Grapple Merch out there. We want to help them grow as well. So those are the sponsors here on Pillar to Post. Now, we've got those links in the description for you below, as well as my Teespring stores and my Facebook merch page, author page, and my Facebook link itself if you want to send me a friend request. My Patreon, you can support the channel for as low as $1 a month, and you'll get all everything you'll have access to everything 12 hours before any youtuber does make sure you take advantage of that if you want to okay you are not being asked to or begged to or whatever i'm throwing it out there for you you have the option to help the channel out you can follow me on twitter at pillar to post 77 and my email is steel dragon 1234 at hotmail.com if you want to order your very own beanie or circle of steel merchandise just give me a shout out here on at my email, steeldragon1234 at hotmail.com. But this dude cannot wear this in the house for very long. I'm not that type of guy. I like to stay cool. It's summertime out here. It is the first day of summer. We're done with the rain. And I am so thankful for that. So tonight we started off NXT with a women's bout. The return. The return of Ember Moon. And she would be going one-on-one -on -one with Peyton Royce with Billy Kay standing in her corner. Now, last week we seen on NXT that Ember Moon got cleared. But not before Peyton Royce and Billy Kay began to mock her and call her names and, and just antagonize her in the performance center. Medical doctor came up, handed her release papers. She was ready for in-ring action, and she looked at Billy Kay, Peyton Royce, and said, you're next, basically. And tonight, she got that opportunity. She would go one-on-one -on -one with Peyton Royce. Now, it wasn't a bad match, okay? I do see that these women still need a little bit more work. Moon, uh, Ember Moon, pretty good in the ring. But um, you need to have someone on the equal standing with you if you want to have a great match. And they either have to be on equal standing or they have to be better than you in order to get that big match feel. This was an okay match. And I still enjoyed it. Because I love the way Ember Moon is in the ring. It showed she's got some weaknesses. She's still rehabbing that, that shoulder. At least for the most part, that's what the storyline's all about. And we've seen Peyton Royce take advantage of that bad shoulder throughout the match. It was a pretty good match. Or I should say, okay match. I don't want to make it sound better than it was. Now, Moon and Royce lock up. Moon, uh, excuse me, Moon takes Royce over, but Royce 
rolls through and locks in an arm bar. Moon counters into a head scissors and Royce fights out of it. Uh, Royce attempts an arm drag but Moon front flips out of it and Ember lands a drop kick and a spinning clothesline in the corner. Now Moon goes up top but Royce cuts her off. Uh, Royce sets up on up a top rope fisherman suplex but Moon pushes Royce off the rope. Royce bumps into the referee which allows Kay to drop uh, to drop Moon excuse me which allows Kay to drop uh, Moon arm first off the rope onto the ropes. Man, I wrote that down wrong, didn't I? Man, made that hard for my tongue. Now Royce picks up Moon and sends her shoulder first into the turnbuckle. Amber Moon's writhing in pain on the mat. Royce sends Moon into the opposite turnbuckle. And we go to a commercial break here. And when we come back, Royce is working over Moon's shoulder. Amber stiff, uh, stiff shots Royce with a stiff elbow. Moon lands a few kicks followed by a springboard crossbody. Looked very well done. Uh, Amber sends Royce into the corner. Moon tries a front flip clothesline, but Royce almost decapitates Moon with a spin kick. Looked wonderful. I, it was a good spot. Now, both Moon and Royce attempt spin kicks, but each attack is rebuffed. Moon, st Moon takes Royce over with another head scissors, and Amber sets up the Eclipse, but Kay pulls Royce out of the ring. Now, clearly upset, Ember Moon dives off the rope, uh, not top rope, it was second rope, onto Kay. They end up back in the ring. Um, Royce, I believe, throws Ember Moon back in the ring. Moon and Kay both try a crucifix pin. Neither can get the three count. Royce hits a Widow's Peak for a near fall. And Royce picks up Moon, but Moon sends Royce headfirst into the turnbuckle. Moon mounts the top rope and finally hits the Eclipse on Royce. Royce, done for. Your winner of the match, Ember Moon. I, I, there, like I said, it was an okay match. They had really good spots in this match, um, like the, um, the spin kick as uh, Ember Moon was doing the front flip clothesline. That one was a perfectly timed move. And then we had the Eclipse, of course. Um, when Ember Moon dove off the second turnbuckle to the outside onto Peyton Royce, it just, I don't know what it is with Billy Kay, it just looked wrong, you know? It's like that chick can botch almost anything. But Ember Moon is your winner on her comeback to NXT from her shoulder injury. Not a bad match, but not a great match. You had some good spots in there, and that was about it. But for NXT, it wasn't too bad, okay? Now, backstage, Hideo Itami apologizes to Cassius Ono when Cassius Ono was getting ready to do an interview. Ono tells Itami that he understands his frustrations. He has been there before as well. They can both move forward from this, and Ono is going to start tonight against Aleister Black. But up next, we have the Ely Brothers. Versus Sanity, and I, I'm trying to figure out who the Ely brothers are. I have seen them before. They look very familiar. I'm going to have to do some research tonight. Or if you know, please post a comment in the comments below. Because for some reason, they look very familiar to me. And I don't know what it is. I seen way back in TNA, I had I seen um, Devon Dudley with his boys at ringside. And for some reason, the Ely boys kind of resemble... Devon's sons. I could be wrong. I probably am wrong. But if you know who the Ely boys are, please let me know because I don't know. With a lot of work, I think these guys could be something. You know, they got the height, they got the look. Uh, they just don't have the it right now. You know what I'm saying? So the Ely brothers will be taking on Sanity's Alexander Wolf and EY, Eric Young. So Uriel. And Alexander Wolf kick off the match. Wolf forces Uriel into the corner. Now Eric Young tags in. Wolf and Young hit drop toe hold into an elbow drop combo. Uriel manages to tag in Gabriel. Now Wolf boots Gabriel in the face, and Wolf and Young beat down Gabriel in the corner. Wolf locks in a uh, modified camel clutch, and Gabriel manages to take in 
but is quickly dispatched. Now, Wolf and Young hit a back suplex neckbreaker combo for the win. Your winner's sanity. A very short-lived match. It was. Um, Ely boys still have a long ways to go before they are ready for any kind of big push. They are still going to be working hard in the Performance Center as well as, um, you know, NXT. So, a bit of work, and I think these guys, you know, they kind of, they kind of got that look of um, Harlem Heat did. You know, when they were younger, they were both tall dudes. You got Booker T, Stevie Ray, um, you know, and, and the Ely brothers, they kind of got that look, you know. But they just don't have the it right now that will push them and elevate them to the next level. Want to see big things from these boys. It looks like they could be big. But, you know, if they don't have the it factor, they're not going to go anywhere. they got to work hard. they got to push themselves hard. And all that work is going to pay off if they can get through. So we get an announcement that the last woman standing match for the NXT Women's title has been announced and Asuka will defend against Nikki Cross next week. I love that. These women just look phenomenal beating the crap out of each other around the ring and around the arena. Nothing, nothing compares to these women, what they do in the ring, to what we're seeing on SmackDown and Raw from the women over there. You know what? You throw Asuka, uh, Ruby Riot, and Nikki Cross in a ladder match, and I guarantee you they will blow whatever happened at uh, Money in the Bank with those women or what's going to happen next week on SmackDown just clear out of the water because these women are willing to take that risk. They are willing to make themselves look good and take that risk to elevate themselves, and we don't see that from the women on Raw or SmackDown. Not going to see it in a long time. So that match I am waiting for for next week. But up next we get Sonya. All right. Excuse me. I better take a drink. My tongue is just wanting to do a lot of bad things today. Sonya Deville. Former MMA fighter. They did a little, uh, a little uh, vignette of her tonight. She looks fantastic. I've seen her in the ring before. She looks great. Um, I still think she's missing a little something. But for the most part, that viciousness in her strike. The striking fighter, I like that. Uh, and she went against Rachel Evers tonight. Um, now, clearly the fans weren't really behind this. They were they were supporting Rachel Evers. Um, Sonya Deville got a lot of boos and everything. But I mean, for the most part, this match didn't really get the fans out of their seats or anything but it was still not a bad match it was a striking match now deville takes down evers and she follows that up with a basement knee strike Evers surprises deville with a northern light suplex for a near fall deville slams evers into the corner and kicks evers in the gut over and over again now deville locks in a body scissors but evers struggles to escape but deville face washes her with her forearm now, DeVille double legs Evers. Evers manages to hit a jawbreaker and punches DeVille in the face. Devils tells Evers, you just messed up. She takes off her glove and unleashes a flurry of gut shots. It, they look brutal, you know, and they sounded brutal too. Uh, DeVille slaps on an arm submission for the tap out victory. Sonia DeVille is your winner of the night and we are going to to see a lot of big things from Sonya Deville here on NXT. That whole striking bit, and then when she gets hit in the face like she did tonight, and she removes that glove, I thought it just perfect. You know, and I've seen her do it one time before when i seen her in the ring on NXT. When she removes that, that glove, it just tells you, you're just, you just messed the hell up. You're getting the beats put to you now. And that's exactly what happened, and then she made... Um, Evers tap out look wonderful I did like that but like I'm saying DeVille might need just a little bit more work or she needs to be facing the right competitor um, Evers just didn't really cut it for me she kind of looked like a um, a Bailey wannabe and not a very good wannabe you know so that was just my opinion of them of of her now we had a pre-recorded 
um, a vignette that uh, took place, and it was supposed to have taken place earlier in the day. Bobby Roode is in a photo shoot when Roderick Strong and his wife and child come into the uh, into the 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 room. I don't know the office, wherever the hell they are. Now Bobby Roode tells Roderick Strong's wife to let him know when she is ready for a real man to let him know. Now Strong. He's, as, he's, he's as, you know, kind of backing his wife up, you know, getting her out of the way because he flips out, goes on the attack, attacks Rude, and basically this sets up a big match. In two weeks, Rude will have to defend the NXT Championship against Strong. This is, I believe, the 400th episode of NXT. I believe that's what they announced tonight. So that is going to be the big match, the main event of the 400th episode of NXT. Now, both of them just screaming and snarling at each other tonight. It was a good spot. I like what NXT is doing. Even with the uh, Nikki Cross and uh, Asuka match. Excuse me. They could have very much well done that tonight. But they are putting time between these matches. They are they're, they're trying to sell the match. So they're holding it off. They're taking, going to it slowly. Now, they could even go a little bit more slow. You know, they could have Asuka do run-ins over the weeks against Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross is doing the same Asuka. This could be a month-long build if they wanted to, but they're not. They're just spacing it out week to week to make sure that they're not going to overdo it and not sell the show the way they could. And this is what's going to bring viewers to NXT because they, it's anticipation. Okay, they're not just throwing it out there for us every week and we've got really nothing big to look forward to. Now, we've got big things to look forward to. We've got Asuka and Nikki Cross next week and then in two weeks, we've got Strong versus Root on the 400th episode of NXT and I love the way they do that shit. That is the way it needs to be done on Raw and SmackDown. They are overusing Nakamura. They are underutilizing their tag team talents. They're underutilizing a shitload. When's the last time we've seen the Perfect Ten, Ty Dillinger? We got to see him on a Sonic little um, promo this past week, and that is sad. NXT is where it's at. They are doing things right, and I can understand how Triple H gets frustrated with the way McMahon wants to do things with NXT and the rest of WWE. I can understand that. But finally, we reach our main event of the night. The match I've been waiting for a long time to see. I've been waiting for a match with Aleister Black where he's got to be taken to the limit and he's got to show us a little bit more in his repertoire as well as in his, um, basically in his heart, you know? That, that, uh, that feeling you get from a wrestler when you're watching him. That you can see he's putting everything he's got into that match. He's putting a little bit of sweat in there. He's putting a little bit of blood. Maybe a tooth, you know? That's what I want to see. And tonight, Aleister Black was taken closer to the limit than he has been by Cassius Ono. This is the first time they would meet in NXT. But these guys have met before in the indies, indie circuit as um, Chris Hero and Tommy End. They know each other very well. But today, this was a whole different story because you're in NXT, you are expected to wrestle a, a different way. You have to go and attack a match in a lot different way. And this match started off slow. The fans were very quiet at the beginning of this match because they weren't sure what to expect. They weren't sure who they were supposed to cheer for because they all love Aleister Black. They all love Cassius Ono. And I'm not sure what Aleister Black is supposed to be. Is he supposed to be a heel or a face? Very hard to tell, especially when all the fans are cheering for you all the time whenever they see you. Now, they know and love Tommy End, and they love Aleister Black, his new gimmick. But it's hard to, hard to cheer for someone when you don't know who to cheer for because they're both fan favorites. So this match started off very slow. The fans were very quiet at the beginning. They were waiting to see when the big impactful moves were going to appear. And it was a whole feeling out process for both men before we finally got into the real striking. And when we got into the real striking, they went nose to nose and they put the attacks. And this was a striking match. This wasn't your usual 
uh, you know, move for move hold. That might have started out that way. But in the end, this was nothing. They were selling their striking ability. And they did that very well tonight. I, I got to give credit to Cassius Ono. He is a very agile man for his size. And for Alistair Black, the things he can do with the size he's got and how fast he is on those feet, man. Unbelievable match. And you had to have been there. And I did like it the way it started off slow and it built up and it built up and it built up. And then, bam, it's all over in a big impactful um tit for tat move that's that's the way i take away from this man it was just everything just gradually building up until that big crescendo and we hit black mass and it's all over beautifully done match these guys made sure they thought things through while they were going through the match they were going step through step through step and you could hear from the fans that that they were following along they might have been very quiet at the beginning but when those impactful strikes and moves started hitting, that they, they got louder and louder and more confident in who they needed to cheer for. That's the way a match is supposed to be played out. And it was done very well tonight here on NXT with Cassius Ono and Aleister Black. So let's go through the match because it was, it was in my books, a very well done match. I don't give a shit what any other podcaster has to say. A lot of people don't like it how a match will start off slow. This kind of was, to me, a throwback uh, to way, the way a lot of older matches were done. You know, you, you start off slow. You get the, the fans invested. Okay, you feel each other out. You feel each other out. And then move for move, move for move. And then the striking takes place. And then it's just back and forth action straight through. And that's what I love about the way NXT runs things. They got a way to take from from their their traditions, you know, the old ways, and apply them with the modern day, and it works. They prove that it works, and yet Vince McMahon can't see that for Raw and SmackDown. He just can't envision that for the main roster, and I don't understand that. NXT proves it week to week to week, and they proved it again tonight, and I'm happy that I've seen Cassius Ono and Aleister Black go at it one-on-one. -on -one. There was no interference, and I was worried that there would might there might be interference by Hideo Itami because he's been so off lately. That didn't take place. That match was not ruined. So Ono and Black search, circle each other at the very beginning, each trying to feel the other out. Now Black locks, uh, Black locks in a front face lock. Ono picks Black up and basically just tosses him to the mat. Now, Ono gives Black a clean break, and Ono and Black lock up once again. Now, Black locks in a wrist lock that he transitions into a hammer lock. Ono reverses that into a cobra clutch. Black counters into another front face lock, and Ono counters into a wrist lock. Black ends up on the mat, and Black nips out of the, uh, of the hold and puts Ono into a key lock. Now, Ono gets to uh, the, the ropes, and Black gives Ono a clean break as well. Ono then forces Black into the corner. Ono waylays Black with a stiff chop to the chest. Now, Ono sends Black into the ropes, but Black rolls over Ono and lands a kick. Now, Ono rolls, into the, rolls to the outside, and Black sets up a dive, but ends up doing a springboard off the ropes into a seated position his meditation pose i should say so if, if you're following along you can you can see exactly how it started it, it started off slow they were doing move for move trying to feel each other out with hold for hold or hold very nicely done now ono cautiously excuse me gets back into the ring and he goes for a kick but black just falls back evades the kick to the face he kips up to his feet and unleashes a sick flurry of strikes. Beautifully done. Black knees Ono in the face. Ono stumbles into the ropes, but explodes off the ropes and destroys Black with a forearm strike. And we go to a short commercial break and Ono obliterates Black with a boot to the face. Ono gets a two count, but uh, Black kicks out and Ono traps Black's arm and applies a rear chin lock. Black gets to his feet, but Ono slams him back first down to the mat. Now, Ono crushes Black with a running senton. 
um, put his full weight on the chest of of Black. It was it looked. It looked like, almost like a botch in a way. I, I'm not sure if he did do it on purpose like that, if it was meant to be a senton like that, or if he fucked it up. But he got his full weight on Black's chest. Now, Ono goes for a pinfall, and Black kicks out once again. So Ono sits cross-legged in the ring, mocking, mocking Aleister Black, his meditation pose. Black looks over at Ono, and just basically is like, disgusted with the way Ono is mocking him gets to his feet and nails Ono in the back with a uh, a very stiff kick and then slams him in the face slams him face first into the mat now Ono immediately follows that with a kick to the face Black manages to kick out once again and Ono tries to punch Black in the face but Black catches Ono's fist Ono hits the ropes. Black blasts Ono with a standing double foot stomp. Springboard moonsault by Black, and Black calls for the Black Mass. But Ono ducks, and Black pivots and catches Ono in the head with a head kick all the same. Now Ono kicks out of another near fall. Black follows that up with a kick to Ono's chest, and Ono grabs Black's leg and knees him in the face. Ono hits the ropes, but Black boots him in the face again. Now, Ono bounces off the ropes and lands a boot of his own. It was tit for tat at this point, and it's still not enough to keep Black down for the count. Now, Ono sets up a neck breaker, and Black counters it into a pin. Ono kicks out, and Black lands a striking combo. Beautifully done, looked vicious and brutal. Ono hits an enziguri, followed by a head kick, Black kicks Ono in the head as well, and Ono elbows Black in the face. Black knees Ono in the face, and Ono picks up Black and, really, and, and hits a release vertical suplex. Look nasty, but before Ono manages to hit his uh, roaring elbow, and before he's allowed to do a full rotation, Black hits the Black Mass. Ono out for the count. And your winner, Alistair Black. Like I said, man, very hard-fought match. Very smartly well-done match. And like I said, a strike, a striker's match. This was all about the punches and the kicks. Um, there was a few holds in there. There was a few big moves in there. But all in all, this was all about the strikers. And damn, Alistair Black and Ono are some of the best in the business when it comes to striking. Beautifully done. I love the main event. I, I liked and enjoyed, for the most part, what happened on NXT tonight. Um, I want to see the Ely boys a little bit more when they are a little bit more refined. I think it's a little bit earlier to, early to put them out there in front of the camera because they are not ready for it yet. They need some more time. And with some time and a lot of training, these guys could be the next next big tag team. They got the look, they've got the height, they've got, you know, they, they just need the it that will give them that, that it factor, you know, and they don't have that yet. When they have it, it's going to be good. So that's NXT tonight. This was your Pillar to Post report. It is 2017, June 21st, and I had a great night with NXT. Now, tonight... I'm going to be uploading. I wanted to have uploaded tonight or t earlier tonight, but it did not happen. Uh, the flu really nailed my ass today. I slept for most of the day. I couldn't get off the out of bed, and every time I did, I just would fall right back asleep. So I didn't do a live stream. I was supposed to do a um, a career mode of 2K17. I was supposed to start that today, and I was supposed to have uh, Pillar to Post uploaded on. Um, on Patreon at 6 did not happen because of the flu so it's gonna be up there tonight just a little bit late I do want to apologize for that but I will see you tonight as well as tomorrow once pillar to post goes live on YouTube have a good night love all the support from you guys love the new subscribers I appreciate it everybody and you know what just keep on helping this channel grow we remember we get up to 200 subscribers someone's going to get some merchandise around here. So, have a good night, everyone.